Gary, let's dive into your initial consultation. Right. Um, first, can you describe for us what is it, right? Okay. Right, and, and why is it important? And then we'll dive into the how tos. This happens before we even show up on a listing appointment. And Chris, I, one thing I can share with everybody is that the times when I showed up to listing appointments and I walked out without the listing agreement signed is when I did not follow mm -hmm. this process. Either I didn't spend the amount of time necessary during the initial consultation, or perhaps I just didn't even have an initial mm. consultation. Well, what is an initial consultation? Yeah, that's the good question. So the initial consultation is the time spent on the phone really asking questions to understand who your customer is. Who are they? What, what needs, what, mm. need, what concerns, desires, fears? What, what's the purpose of them mm. selling? Who are they? What is their home like? Where did they come from? And what do they need and expect from you? Because only by understanding all of this are we able to craft an appropriate presentation and conversation at the listing appointment to take care of them in a way that is actually what's in it for them. That's, that's something that we're mm -hmm. gonna talk a lot about is with them. Everything we talk about during the listing appointment is about what's in it for them and the only way we know about who they are is this initial consultation. Now this initial consultation, it occurs on the phone, mm -hmm. al al always occurs on the phone for me, and I follow a template to make sure that I ask the appropriate questions in the order in which they are designed. Why is that so important? Well, we have to build a, a very specific, important word with them. What's that? Trust. Trust. So. The whole goal of this initial consultation is to understand who they are and begin to build trust mm -hmm. with them. And it's designed in a way to where we ask just very generic questions up front and, and they answer and then it becomes conversational and the deeper we go, the more intimate and almost prying it becomes right. because we're asking them very specific personal questions about them that they wouldn't just share with a stranger and they wouldn't just share with me if uh, if I just showed up and got on the phone and started asking them these questions. So um, something that you pointed out to me, Gary, is that there's no way you could show up onto a, show up at a listing appointment and really understand how to serve that customer unless you've done the initial consultation first. Because the initial consultation, consider it your discovery phase, right? Yes, it is absolutely discovery. That's a great word to describe it. And we also need to make sure that we spend enough time. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of agents that I've, I've trained over the years uh, share with me that, gosh, they just went off the phone as fast as possible, which I understand that you're excited. You want to get mm -hmm. to work. You want to go to the listing appointment, but we must have time spent mm -hmm. on the phone with them to extract the information we need, to build the trust we need, and to differentiate ourselves enough to where when we show up on the listing appointment, we're ready to go. You use a template, and you have a tool that you use for your initial we consultation. Yep. So can you explain to us what is it that you use, and then um, we'll dive into it. And really, I would like to be able to go into the initial consultation, perhaps do some role play, okay. go into the specific questions, and we're gonna give them, you know, you're equipped with the template so that you'll be able to use the same template for your own initial consultation, but I want them to be able to feel really comfortable with, this is how I ask these questions, this is how I interact, you know, whether you use the same tool that Gary uses or you use another tool, doesn't matter so much as these are the questions that we're asking in this order. You got it. So Chris, as you were talking about, is that yes, I do use specific technologies mm -hmm. and templates within those technologies to make sure that I stay on track and I always make sure that I follow my sales process. Now the technology that I use during my initial consultation is Evernote. Okay. And so here on my iPad, I'm gonna go ahead and open up Evernote. And like I said, Chris, I do have a template for every single thing that I'm doing. And what you see here is the initial phone consultation template. Now at first blush, that it looks pretty simple. I know, right? it only seems like a handful of things you have to fill out. Yeah, it is. However, as we get into this, I think everybody needs to understand is that this takes a minimum of 30 minutes. It could take up to 45 minutes to go through this initial consultation. Mm. So the first thing I see here is name and address. That seems pretty straightforward. It is pretty straightforward. And do I already know that? Gosh, I hope so. <laughs> However, one thing that's important to add here is, do they have any spouses or partners mm. or anybody else involved in the transaction? So that's where you would say, okay, Chris, you know, I know that you own this home. By the way, does anybody else own this home? Does anybody else need to um, sign off on selling gotcha. this house? Then the address, we know the address, right? So but just 
can you confirm the address? Is really, it's just easy, right? And these are easy, easy questions. There's nothing that's going to throw them for a loop here, right? Or throw them off guard. Or there's nothing here going to cause them to put up defenses, you know? That's the whole point, is that these are just very, they're very generic questions that are designed to kick off the conversation, break the ice, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I'm asking these questions, so yeah, Chris, do you mind if I verify the address that we're talking about? Excellent. Um, now, I've more than likely already done research on this property, I've already pulled tax records, so I know that. Mm -hmm. However, there are times when people call and we're just we're we're this having the, the initial time. the initial time that we've ever spoken, and so I need to get that as well. Gotcha. Additionally, I'll come in here and I'll get their uh, all of their contact information. A great way to verify this is say, okay, Chris. So I, I have the following as your contact information. Mm -hmm. This is the email. Is that going to be the best email address to contact you at? Gotcha. This is your mobile. This is your office. This is your home phone. Are these the best places to contact you? Gotcha. And so I want to verify what the best place is to contact them and when. All right, so as we begin to fill this out, it starts to populate a little bit, and yet we're, we still haven't gotten into anything that's really... Right, this is all surface level stuff. All surface and, and Probably level. stuff I are, you may already have, or yep. just filling out the rest of your contact record and verifying. Again, no reason for them to throw up their defenses, and you're just humming along now. Now, yep. this, in, this what, takes maybe two minutes to do? It takes a couple of minutes. All right, but during these two minutes, you're starting that rapport building process. It is right? all about building rapport. So when I start asking the more difficult questions, mm -hmm. they don't put their guard up and say, well, why, why do you need to know that? Well, if, while building rapport, it's also probably important on how you language this. So instead of saying, uh, well, hey, is your mobile this? It's like, hey, let me confirm the mm -hmm. mobile number that I have is, is the right one for me to reach you at. Because now all of a sudden it takes this surface level information, turns it into verification. Verification is what like a professional does. Hey, let me just verify this. Let me affirm this. Let me confirm this. Right? You got it. And so that's what we're doing here. And then the next step is... We already have their contact information, mm -hmm. but we also want to know when is the best time to reach them and the best method to use because, okay. I mean, gosh, Chris, so many people like being contacted so many different ways these days. Right. Some people, I've actually had clients say, well, if you can just Facebook message me, that'd be easiest. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, on who? <laughs> but what we do Snapchat is we- Snapchat me. Yeah, snap, well, I, I have had that too. Uh, but it's really important to make sure that we communicate with the customer in the way that they want to be communicated in the best time to reach them. And this is really important because, you know, what if your doctor or your client is a doctor and works nights? And they're like, well, the best time to reach me is 2 a.m. because that's when I'm in between mm -hmm. surgeries. You know, who knows? We don't know that until we ask. So we need to make sure of that so that when we reach out to them, they're actually mm -hmm. available to speak. So the, what you could say here is say, okay, I'd, thank you for verifying all of your contact information here. Now, w from time to time, I'll need to reach out so we can have communications about your home. Do you mind if I ask, what is the best time mm -hmm. to reach you and how do you like to be best communicated with? Gotcha. Again, nothing to throw up their defenses. We're just now starting to understand how to best serve them. So... You know, maybe the client says contacting me during lunch uh, via text is best, and if you don't catch me there, call me at home after dinner. And some people might say, yeah, just text me anytime, it doesn't matter, right? It's just whatever they say is what we write down. Yep. Now, so as we get through that, the last thing I need to know is what was the source of this client? Okay. Where did they come from? I always need to know. Now, these days, the source could be multiple places. It could be Facebook, email, the website, and a friend. Mm -hmm. But what's most important is I need to know how did they think they came into contact ah, with me. Gotcha. So it's not the actual, you know, the analytical side of the tracking. It's in their mind where, how did they find us? Absolutely. So you would say something like this. Say, you know, Chris, I, I always loved and learn how people learn about me and how you hear about me. Do you mind if I ask, how did you learn about me and my firm? Well, I was referred to by, you know, Johnny. Okay. So then which we'll... was probably, by the way, that's probably one of the most common things because according to the National Association of Realtors, the number one way people, you know, home sellers find their real estate professional is first through referral or word of mouth. So that really wraps up the surface level conversation and okay. questions there. Now it's a, we we've kind of broken the ice, we're building mm -hmm. rapport. Now it's time to start diving a little bit deeper into who they are, what their concerns, their fears, their wants, their desires are, and how can we take care of them. So what we'll do is we'll scroll down here 
and we're gonna take a look at interest. Now, what I wanna share with everybody is what is interest? Interest is what is the client right now? Mm -hmm. What is the client currently interested in talking about and sharing with us? Okay. And this is important because I need to know what you want to talk about so that I make sure that we talk about that during the call because only by doing that will we know that we satisfied what their requests and requirements were for the call. Okay. Okay. And the way to ask this is something like this. So Chris, over the next 30 or 45 minutes, uh, if we were to cover everything that you wanted to talk about today, could you share with me what, what are the top five things you want to talk about? All right, so covering those questions and understanding what they want to talk about during the call is really important because this is where, this is the very first time where they really are starting to feel your understanding, your concern, and your desire to understand what they're concerned about. So this is the first time where you're starting to extract that information. Yeah. What's yeah. next? So what's next is experience. I need to know, have they ever sold a house before and when was that? Because what this does is this helps me understand what level of education I'm going to need to dive into. Mm. Document what they say, and Gary, um, you talk about how important it is to really actively be listening to our clients. Yep. All right, so now that we know your past experience and your knowledge of selling a house and, uh, and what it was like working with your last realtor, now we need to start asking a little more personal questions. This is, these are some questions where I've heard from some of our clients that they get a lot of resistance from their client on because they feel like they're prying into their mm. own personal business. And the way we get around that is to actually build trust through this process. So the next thing we need to know is time frame. Gosh, we need to know when Chris is thinking about moving. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is I would ask it like this. So Chris, in an ideal world, kind of thinking through the process of things, um, can you share with me what is your time frame to making a decision to making a move and actually getting that done? Right now, I'd, I'd really love to understand a little more about you and any concerns or fears that you might have about selling your house. So as you can see, we're really starting to, to dig in, to build that relationship, to have conversation around who they are and what their concerns are. And, uh, and by the way, this concerns document, this could be a full page in and of itself. You're gonna continue digging, continue asking questions, but make sure that you, you don't get to a point to where it's annoying. Right. Right, so it, it, at a certain point, you need to move on. All right, so at this point, what we would do is we would ask, what are the next steps? Well, Chris, you know, at this point, over the past uh, 45 minutes together, I think we've really uncovered a lot of who you and your family are and what your dreams are and why you're wanting to make the move now and things that you might be concerned about. So what I'd love to do is go ahead and schedule a time when you and your wife uh, will be available to meet at your home. And this is time where we really need it to be uninterrupted. So if you have any kiddos or pets, we need to make sure that you know the kiddos are maybe with friends or family and that the pets are uh, either you know locked away or in the backyard so we can really focus our time together. So uh, if you could take a look at your schedule and let me know when over the next few days are you going to have about 90 minutes to meet with me. Sure, yeah. And now, so at what point do you connect some of the earlier things that we talked about, what we're going to talk about? Do you, is this where you circle back in and explain? This is exactly where I circle back in because after we, so the next step is schedule the appointment. And then what I do immediately following is educate them on what is going to happen during the listing appointment. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing, is that by educating them what's going to happen and the five different phases of our listing appointment, it actually goes back and it takes care of all of the questions that they've asked so far. So during that, um, you know, if we go back to your interest, Chris, you were talking about the ballpark value of the home. As we educate them about the five phase process, it answers the question of when we're going to talk about the ballpark value of the home. Get a sense of, of what the fees are. We're gonna talk about that during the appointment. Curious about what's been happening in the market. We're gonna talk about that during the appointment. So now during the next steps, we schedule that appointment, we educate them about the five phase listing appointment, and uh, we thank them for their time, and then also let them know to check their inbox, because we're not done. Hmm. We're going to be sending follow-up information after this appointment, confirming our listing appointment, 
educating them on what is going to happen again during the listing appointment, sharing with them our marketing plan, and sending them our new client welcome kit. So that really wraps up the whole initial consultation and then sets up the next phase because all of this is part of a process, right? This is a process and you want to be able to get each part of the process done so that that trust is built. You're walking away with the signed agreement and hopefully you're even duplicating business and duplicating listings during the process. Absolutely. So at this point, we have a lot of information. We're armed with it. We're building trust. We let them know about what's coming next. What's next? is we need to send a follow-up email, get that appointment scheduled, and then prepare for the listing appointment.